Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today on my channel. Today I am starting a project which is actually going to begin on January 1st. Um, myself and a group of scrappy friends are going to be doing an inspirational hop starting on January 1st to kind of kick off the new year um, and to kind of do a reset on our scrappy stuff and trying to motivate everyone to get in and use what you've got, but also to try and use some of the things that are in our stash. And so this one is going to be concentrating on our six by six paper pads and our scraps. And it's going to be called um, Baby's Got Scraps. And the challenge is to make a layout every day and to only use one full sheet of paper and the rest either scraps or six by six papers. So I am starting out a little early because I want to try and make some paper kits. So I just grabbed a random stack. I think a lot of this is probably like Amy Tan and it gave me a paper cut when I was pulling it out. So I've already gotten an injury. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I just, I have stuff on my paper thing here. So even though we're going to be doing 30, 31 days, I'm pulling 40 papers. I'm going to kind of do it. Um, I'm not really sure. So this is the way I'm thinking about tackling it. It may change if I don't find that this is working out. So what I'm going to do is go through random paper pads and try and get a variety of background papers that I can use in different color tones, um, some bright, some more um, subtle, you know, just a variety so that when I go to my scraps, I have some backgrounds that will go with a variety of scrap papers and 6x6 paper pads. I'm going to pick 40 um, because that way as I'm going through, if something doesn't work, I can always put it back. And then I reserve the right if I come up with a cool combination of scraps, but none of the papers that I, I have pulled really go with what the scraps are because the whole purpose is to use those up. I can then go in and either get a plain piece of cardstock, white paper, black paper, whatever. The only, like I said, the only challenge that we have is that you can only use one full sheet of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and start kind of flipping through these and just kind of pulling anything that I like that would make a good background keeping in mind it's going to be paired up with scraps. So I might not pull some of these busier papers because I don't want to have to match up a lot of color. So it's going to be more of a neutral look for my background. So that's all we're going to do today. And then the next step that I'll do is I will pull out my scraps and we will try and pull um, match the full sheet of paper with enough scraps to make a layout. Then I'm going to pull pictures. And then with the pictures, if I need to maybe revisit the scraps again, I can do that. Because um, again, this is just kind of my jumping off point. I'm not finding anything I want for a background in this one, I don't think. So, um, it's just a jumping off point to start with, and then I can always go forward and backward in the process. Once I have my papers picked, my pictures picked, then I'll go through and pull some general um, embellishments. So there's nothing in this one that I really wanted. So, sorry, Amy. So once I figure that out, then I'll go back and try and, um, you know, um, tweak it, we'll say. Yeah, so that way, um, when it the when I start actually doing the videos and actually doing layouts, then um, we'll have it together. That's not bad, but still not what I'm looking for. I'm really just trying to find more subtle things, like I would find if I would have like grid paper, um, more like an ombre, 
on my normal scrapbooking, a lot of these I would have no problem using as a piece of background because I tend to go a little bit um, bolder with my stuff. But with with the, the project that I've got, I don't want to, I want to make it easy to match them with scraps. So like this one I think would be an easy one to match with scraps because I can go in a variety of different colors. It's got a little teal, it's got the pink, different shades of pink. So I'm gonna pull this one out. And this one wouldn't even be bad, but it's I, I'm not sure about the busy patterns. Like I said, I don't know what I have for scraps. And so to pair them with something that's busy. Ugh. And even this one I could see maybe doing. I'm going to hold off because I think I've got tons and tons and tons of paper pads. So I should be able to come up with, you know, 40 pretty generic um, papers, I would think. So I've got one. I'm on a roll. Like I said, a lot of these I could see me doing as a background if, if I knew what I was doing because I tend to go with the busy backgrounds, but I'm just trying to um, be a little bit more subtle in my background choices this round so that I can really burn through the um, scraps that I have. And I may find some that, like, with this one, I might be able to find something that would go with that, but again, that to me is more of like a layering. All right, I'm not grab anything from there. Well, I am just striking out here. Let's see. Okay, this one looks like it'll have some. And this one wouldn't be bad, but now I've got two pink. And I really want to try and get some other colors than pink. And so yeah, I hope you guys um, find that this will be a fun challenge and want to um, partake in it. I just think it would be a, a um, okay. Well, I'm finding a lot of pink. I just think everybody would have a lot of fun doing this. And again, it gets you looking at your paper um, pads and your scraps and challenges you to go in there and try and get a few layouts. I kind of like this, but I'm going to wait. I don't know about you guys, but I am not really a marbly person. Uh, this one wouldn't be bad. This is kind of more to the yellow tone. I really like this one, and I like this one. But again, I have a lot of pink, and then it's got that brighter color in there. So now I'm limiting with my like fuchsia pink and yellow. And I was kind of wanting more of a subtle tone so I can pair it with other pattern papers that I have. And I like this too. And this would be a normal background that I would like. But again, I'm afraid of what patterns I would bring in. So I'm going to wait because I know in my stash I have a lot of other stuff that would work. Like the wood grains. Okay, now this one will work. And that's kind of a more of an orangey color. So yeah, it's going to be a fun time, kind of looking forward to it. And I've never done page kits kind of to this level. I, I like watching them being made. I know Shannon with She's Crafty and 
uh, Nicole Jones, and a lot of them make their page kits, and they do really good with them. And I'm more of a make a bigger kit and more of a theme kit than I am. Um, and I've got a bunch of like John Hatfield and stuff up here, so let's see what we can find. So I'm more of a um, make it as I go kind of a person. So this is kind of a new for me. I like that. Okay, this one would work for a background. And it's a different color. And I like the pink. Yeah, but I got so much pink already. I like the dark. Yeah, so I'm trying to make a variety because Again, I have 20 some years of scraps. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. Even though it's got the floral print behind it, it's kind of a tone on tone. So if I pair this with another color like this, it's gonna be fine. And so I would have more options in my drawer. I just have to match this color and then whatever else like a pattern paper would bring in. So that's kind of more the the what I'm thinking I want to pull. Again, I may get to my scrap drawer and then find out that what I pulled out isn't so great and then decide that I want to go and pull more um, more background, you know, pages. Or like I said, if I match two things up and go, oh, this would look really good with blah, blah, blah kind of a background. I'm reserving the right to go back and try and um, find more. So like this one would be a cool background, you know, with all these different colors. But if all my colors in my drawer are all busy, multi-colored scraps, it won't go good. But if I found something that was more like a solid yellow and a solid purple, and I wanted to mix that with this, I could then come back and, and pull from it. I like the clouds, and that brings a little blue in. And I have pictures of my grandkids and my kids when they were little. So we can go with that, so that brings kind of another color in. Let's see. I love Dear Lizzie, so let's see what she's got in here. Now this brings some green in, and I don't have green. Now this one's a little bit busier, but again, it's more of a subtle, so I could do it. And it's got just a little pink and a little yellow. And I'm going to try and bring this one in. I might be able to find more solid colors or bigger patterns that would work on that. I know I've got a lot of pink, but I like that background. And I do have a lot of pink scraps. This is kind of a cool background. And I do like this orange. Okay, let's count how many I've got. So I've got a lot of pink, kind of a lot of teal. I need to get more of like the brown and the darker green tones. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I'm at fourteen. Okay, let's throw that one back in. Let's see what else we've got. These are a little bit darker tones here. I do like the blue. So hopefully everyone's having a good year. I'm filming this right now in November, beginning of November. So we just got done with Halloween. Actually, today is election day, so I'm avoiding the TV at all costs. Um, I'm tired of that stuff. Now this is really bright, but I don't want to go that direction. I don't know if I have a lot of navy um, scraps. But I can find, like, this has got the yellow in it. So if I can find a complementary color that would go with the navy, that's a good neutral. So here's another good one. I missed it. Here. Okay, I like those. Simple Life had a lot of kind of cool, darker colors. I don't know what I have for photos that would go with a cow print, though. I do have pictures that I have to do. You know what, I'm going to pull it out, so I'm silly, but I have pictures from county fairs. So if I could find a good scrap paper to go with that, I could do some of the photos from the county fair. And I like the brick. It's kind of, to me, a neutral, but with the brown tones. And I have like the Seattle gum wall and some other kind of vacation ones I could probably use that for. And can't go wrong with the wood grain. Okay, that's that one. What else do we got here? I really like this. Let me see. It's probably busier than I want for a background, but let's see what we can do with that. And I like the gray. And I like the green. And again, if I don't find something in my scraps that will go with it, Worst case scenario, I put it back in the paper pad. Um, craft, again, it's a little bit busier of a background than I want, but I think I if I have like wood grain scraps and things like that that will pair with it, I'll be able to match those up pretty good. And I'll grab one of these. Keep gravitating to the pink but I've got so much but again I like I said my pink drawer is overflowing so it's not that I don't have enough pink and I don't want to take more than one of each pattern because I could probably pull 20 wood grains and be happy as heck This one's kind of a different one. This is more, this is a um, 
one of those Craftsmith hot buys, which I need to get these used up. Again, I don't care for the marble. Another gray would be nice. Let's see what we can do with that. Some of these already have like things on it and I can, I can usually incorporate that in but again when I'm trying to set up for scraps like even this one I could see covering this up and using this well let's let's pull it out again if I can find something that I can run a banner over, across here it's a nice wood grain if that's gone and then gets one out of my paper pad. And I like this because again, it's the tone on tone. So if I find something bright to go with it, even like one of those pinks that I have, that would be kind of a cool background. And I like this gray. So I think I have enough gray now. Uh, let's see what else I've got here. These are just ones that I have next to my desk. That's not even counting what I have in my closet. Sad. I don't want to pull pl um, plain yet. Because again, if I can get, I, I like having like the pattern paper. So like this um, polka dot with the kind of the reddish color, that's a cool background for me. Could even do a text, but again, with not knowing. Now, I like this blue. Okay, so that's out of the Pebbles Hey Hello. And this one's Twilight. And I'm just doing a quick scan. I'm not taking a lot of time thinking. This would be a cool background because this is more nature and can go with a lot of different. And then it's pulling in a little bit of green and I've got vacation photos I can do that with. And let's see what else here. This is Saturday afternoon, one kind of two. That's kind of a cool. So leave a comment down below. Are you a pattern background kind of person? Or do you prefer to use like your basic white? Um, black craft. I kind of like the colors. It just, I used to be, you know, like the cardstock background, and I just kind of have found that I like that um, the feel of the the brighter colors and that pattern background. It just, I don't know, makes me happy. This one's Willow. That's pretty. I do have a lot of pictures of my daughter when she was little that I've been trying to scrap. So if I end up with a lot of pink toned, it's not going to be the end of the world. I kind of like this because it's got the green and the pink. And I could see Matt, you know, pairing this with a brown and running the stripe up or down. So I kind of like that. Oh, here's a burgundy kind of color. And I think I made it through this one. And again, I'm flipping past things, and it's not that I don't like them, or that I don't think I could use it as a background. 
It's more, I'm just not feeling it for what this project is. I don't want to make it a difficult project. I want to make it um, an easier project so that when I go to put this together, I'm inspired to scrapbook and I don't look at it and go, oh. And I want to be able to clear out a lot of my scraps. I have so many scraps that I really just need to um, really dive in and use a bunch up. Okay, let's see. Here's the John Hatfield. It's like this is a cool one. I just don't know if in my scraps I'd have anything I could pair with it. So do you guys um, keep your scraps? Do you try and um, purge them? I have never really purged any of my scraps. I haven't purged really any of my stuff. I have old papers. I have old scraps because I figure eventually it will all get on a layout and I have no problem with mixing old and new. Okay, so that kind of cleared out that shelf. Let me go and pull a few more off of my other shelf over here. And like I said, I'm just got a stack of them. And I'm not looking at who they are. I'm just kind of grabbing a stack off the shelf and pulling out random things. So it should be fun to find out what I can. I do have some travel, so this sounds crazy, but I have travel photos. So if I can find some travel paper in my scraps, which I'm sure I have, I would be able to do something with that one. And some of these I've had for a long time and I just need to get them, you know, into books. They're such pretty papers. And a project like this, another thing, you know, even though I'm flipping, it's kind of a I don't know if you guys watch Janet with RTS, but she she's great for going back through her papers because it refamiliarizes her with what she has in her stash. This is kind of a purple. I don't know how much purple paper I have, but I don't have a lot of purple in my stack, so we'll grab one. But anyway, she goes and she's able to then and this is another one that kind of is kind of a weird looking because it's more of a um, cluster with, you know, the postcards and stuff. But again, I have a lot of travel. And so if I can find some really cool travel paper to put on the top of that, I think that would be a cool layout. Yeah, anyways, she goes and she, you, you listen to her talk and she'll just go when she's bored. She'll just sit down and, and pull out papers and look through them and refamiliarize herself with them and uh, and I think it's a good thing because then you just kind of familiarize yourself with what you've got in your um, your stash without having to go and spend more money. And I kind of like this it's kind of got a yellowy green look to it so I think that, that would pair up with a lot of different colors. Oh, now here's a good one. And that's just a good ledger paper. And that's kind of where I'm looking at. I'm really wanting a lot of like kind of ledgery papers that I can just use as a background. This one's kind of a cool one because again, it's a subtle pattern in the background. And so even though it's got a busy pattern on it, you go and you match it with another piece of paper that's got a busy pattern and it this blends in. It's 
let's see, like here, this bright pink with the lemons, it doesn't clash with that teal because this one's so subtle. And same thing with this gray. It's a little bit more busy, so you'd want more of a solid um, tone on tone on top of here, but you could really like these lemons because it's a bigger pattern with these smaller white flowers would have no problem. They wouldn't compete. I think I've made it through. Okay, let's grab another one. And then we'll count, when I get through this pile, we'll count one more time. And I may stop it. I don't want to have you guys have this video be really long. I might do two. So I'm thinking like 30 minutes um, per, um, per kit. And then I'll just time it out with, well, this one's not bad. Even though it's a polka dot. Again, depending on what you pair it with, a good floral on there. See, like there's a floral. Those would be good together, and a bigger floral would look even better. I kind of like this map, again, with my travel stuff. I might be doing more travel than I thought. This is pretty. Kind of a navy with little small hearts. Maybe kind of a fun background. Okay, and let's see. I've already got clouds where I'd pull that one. I do kind of like that, but I've got so many polka dots. We'll grab another ledger paper. Yeah, so do you guys like watching page kits being put together? I sit there and love watching like um, Nicole Jones or um, some of the others. Jen Shao does them, um, I think. Is it Jen? No, it's not Jen. Who is? Who else does it? Um, I'm having a, a moment. I know Shannon does. Um, anyway, I, I sit there and we'll watch them doing their, um, pulling their papers and stuff, and I'll be going, no, that one, that one. So it's kind of fun to watch and see what they. They like as a background. In fact, um, Shannon, when she's crafty, was just using this paper pad um, to make kits more, um, just recently. And when she was going through, I saw this paper and I had a different challenge that I needed. And I'm like, oh, that one will work. <laughs> so I ended up pulling it out. All right. I'm not seeing anything that's floating my boat in this one. So let's count and see where I'm at here. I didn't think it was going to take this many paper pads, to be honest with you. I thought I would come up with more quicker. All right. So we have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, that's twenty. I might have enough. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. It looks like we've got more than enough. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's forty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's try and find one more and then it's at 50. I don't know if I'll go and get 50 page kits put together if I can. That's great because I really do have a lot of scraps. So for me to put 50 of them together would not be a bad thing. This one's Auburn Lane, and I don't want to necessarily go to the grid. Let's go with this one. It's kind of that yellow color. All right, so that's 50. So we'll go with those for now. So the next time I come back, I don't know how many we'll do, but what I'll probably do is I have my papers in colored drawers. So what I might do is break it down and see if we can, you know, I'll pull it over and see what we can throw together and start making some of these kits. Um, and just kind of, like I said, starting off and trying to match them to patterns. Because like, for example, even just sitting next to me right now, I have some big scraps that um, from just things that I've been scrapbooking here. So I could go in, like even with just these two, and see if I can come up with like, will the brown match with something, you know, and just kind of flip through and go, okay, well, the brown looks good with this, and then if I have one more. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm like looking at, trying to see if I can match up things. That's kind of cool too. And... Um, just get them started. I like that. So that's kind of where I'm going to be at. Oh, this is a full sheet. Nope, it's not. And um, we'll see if we can get some of these put together and um, use some of these papers up. They're still good papers. They're just cut into. So um yeah, and I don't always reach for them. And like I said, the paper pads also. I'm personally probably going to go for the scraps before I go for the paper pads, only because my paper pads are easy to get to, as well as my scraps, but I don't tend to go to the scrap drawers. And I really need to get them to where the drawers will open and close because they're right now very full and they need to have some TLC and um, have some attention to them and see if we can get them in some books. So I want to thank you so much and um, be on the lookout for the next round. Like I said, I'm doing this, um, this is October, um, election day, so November 3rd. So I'm not sure at what point I'm going to put them up. I'm going to look and see how many videos it ends up being. And then I'll schedule them out probably about the middle of December so that they run up to January 1st. And so it kind of all coincides together. So I'm not sure if they're going to come out every single day or if I'll do a couple per week leading up to it. Um, we'll figure it out as we go. So thanks again. And we will see you on the next one where we're adding scraps to the backgrounds.